Hi friends, now we start with a new module which is based on bar diagram. It is the most common type of diagram which is used in practice. They are called the one dimensional because only the length of the bar that matters but not the width of the bar is matter. Fine. Here, the, what are the types of the dimensional, one dimensional bar diagram? We have nothing but a what? Horizontal, then vertical, then multiple and the subdivided bar diagram. Now we start with the first one, horizontal bar diagram. For which type of data it is used? It is used for the qualitative data or a data related to space or an area. This is an example of what horizontal bar diagram. Now the next one, that is vertical bar diagram. For which type of data it is used? It is for the quantitative data and here the most of the data represented by the vertical bar diagram. This is what uh, example of a vertical bar diagram. The next one that is multiple bar diagram or a joint bar diagram or a group bar diagram. So here obviously it is used to represent two or more numbers related to each group. Let us take simple example maximum and minimum two or more numbers for a different cities for a, each group. And second one is yes, that is income and expenditure of a different families. Again, now let us take a one simple example of this. Year wise, we have been given an income and expenditure, two numbers, just draw the, you know that how to draw this. So years on the x-axis, income and expenditure on y-axis. So expenditure and income, just draw in the 2001, that is 4,000 is the income and for the in same year, my expenditure is nothing but about 2000, so second bar, so that is nothing but about gray. And similarly for the 2002 also, and uh, we have 8 and 6000, and uh, for the 2003, we have uh, income of that is 10,000, and your expenditure is nothing but about 4000. Now, the next one, that is fourth one, that is subdivided bar diagram. Bar is divided into the what? A subdivided group. So when total and that components of a group are to be represented, then such bar diagram is called as a what subdivided bar diagram. You know the total students of a different division and the number of boys and girls in the each division. Now let us take a simple example. We have been given a what a subject wise that is college wise and the subject wise a students here. So now we are going to take a college on the x-axis and on the y-axis we are going to take a number of students three subjects that is maths, stats and economics. Just first we have to take the for the college A, 700 students are the total. Now we are going to divide that. For the mathematics we have about 300 students, for the stats we have 250 students and for the economics we have about 150 students and so on for the college B, a same that is we have to draw. And for the college C also we have to consider the same way. So total is 350 and uh, maths students that is 200. Then we have a stats student that is 100 and the remaining students for the economy that is nothing but about 50. Now the next one that is a what here what is the important point in this diagram the bar is subdivided into various parts in proportional to the what a given value. And the next second point is each part is shaded differently to distinguish it from the what others. The next one that is a percentage bar. Here the same concept you know but we are going to divide in terms of the percentage. So when such diagrams are prepared the length of the bar is kept equal to 100 and segments are cut in bars to represent the components or percentage of an aggregate. Let us take simple example family A, family B. We have been given a you know that compo that is expenditure, food, clothing, rent, educations and recreations and miscellaneous. Now family A raised to the 100. Now 58 for the food 58. For the clothing that is 58 plus 10. So 58 plus 10. So we have to raise to nothing but a water 68 and so on 68 plus 12 so that is 80 80 plus 6 86 and 86 plus 4 that is 290 and 90 plus 10 so that is nothing but 100 for the family b also we have to consider the same way raised to the 100 then for the food that is a 54 percentage and 54 plus 8 that is 62 and from that it is 77 plus 5 82 82 plus 10 that is 92 and 92 plus 8 that is 100 so percentage bar diagram now we have a two dimensional bar diagram obviously you know that length and width of the bar is important for the two dimensional bar diagram. In such case, the area of the bars represent the what given data. It is also called area diagram or a surface diagram. The different types of that is two dimensional bar diagrams include the pie charts, rectangles, square and the diagrams. The most common used is a pie diagram or a pie chart. 
Now, let us take a simple example for the pie chart. Now, as the name suggests, a circle is used to represent the given data. A circle is divided into number of sectors representing the different components of a variable. The area of such sector is proportional to the value of the components. Pie diagram is used for comparing the different components and the relations to the total. A multiple bar diagram can also be used, but pie diagram is better. You know that when the more than two variables are there, when, when the more than two components are there. In this case, the component value are convenient converted into angles measured in degree. What is the formula for that? Yes, you know that angle is nothing but a what? Value of component upon the total value into 360 degree. Now, let us take a simple example how to draw the pie diagram. You already know this concept. You know, just I take you a brief idea for that. That is 40 for food. We have a 40 percent expenditure. That is 40 upon total is 100. So, 40 upon 100 is 360 into 360. So, we get a what? That is nothing but a what? We get angle as a 144 angle. So, we have to draw the angle of 144 from here. Now, for the clothing, we same. Uh, we have to draw the angle of 72 degree. And for the house rent, we have to draw again a 72 degree angle. For the educations, your angle is 36 degree. And for the other expenses, your angle is nothing but a what is a 36 degree. So this is what pi diagram all about. Now MCQs based on all this concept. The first one, the vertical bar diagram is applicable when what? Yes, your answer in this case is B. The data are quantitative in nature. The second one, the divided bar chart is considered for what? Yes, just recap that. That is your answer in this case is D for A and B. Comparing the different components of a variable and the relation of a different components to the total. That is a main concept for the divided bar chart. The next one, that is the cost of sugar in a month under the head, raw materials and labor, direct productions and other were 12. 20, 35 and 23 units respectively. What is the difference between the central angles for the largest and the smallest component of a cost of sugar? Very simple my dear student. What is the largest one here? 35. Now get the total of all these things first. So 12 plus 20 plus 35 plus 23. We get about 90 units. Largest one is what? 35. 35 upon 90 into 360. So 140. The smallest one is which one? It is 12. So 12 upon 90 into 360. 48. Get the difference of that. 140 minus 48. 92. Yes, my dear student. The answer is T. The next one. That is in order to compare the two related series. Yes, my dear student. What we required? Answer is C. That is A or B. The next one, that is question number five. A pie diagram is used to represent the following data. Now, central angles in the pie diagram corresponding to the income tax and the wealth tax. Income tax, just they go 240. Total, pay like they Total, kit now jayega. Total is nothing but a what? 720. So, 240 upon 720, your angle is 120. And for the wealth tax, wealth tax, kaha pe, kitna hai? Wealth tax 180. So, 180 upon 720 into 360, your answer is nothing but a what? 90 degree here. So, your answer in this case is. A.